because we're going to Texas A&M and we're going to talk about enhanced touchscreens. So this is a research that's being led by Professor and the Department of Mechanical Engineering Chair, Dr. Cynthia Hipwell. Um, enhanced touchscreens, you're wondering how is that going to actually fit in? Well, you know, we're, we're talking about how technology can assist people. And we spend a lot of our time on our smartphones. I think I'm clocking in somewhere between five to six hours a day at this point. Yeah. Uh, Me too. I, I feel like that that's probably either on the low side or just about the average. And if you're someone that relies on your smartphone for assistance throughout your daily activities, then making any improvement um, is essential to how you live your life. Whereas for me, it's just a source of enjoyment and watching YouTube videos or texting people. So what are they doing right. with these enhanced touchscreens? You, you said you're making yeah, the experience I, better. Hit me with it. I'm excited to hear what they're doing. I made a bold entrance. So let's get into it. Um, the, the idea is that they want you to feel textures on your phone. You know, we, we've cracked the auditory sensing technologies. We've cracked the, um, the visual, and to some extent, we have cracked touch with like the haptic system. So if you you know hold down an app on your iPhone, they start shaking and vibrating, and they feel like they're going to get deleted, and they're scared. So that there's some like feedback and you know engagement, yeah. but it's it's not really that advanced if you look back at how much auditory and visual stuff has evolved. The, one of the goals that they set out is that look, imagine a world where you can take your smartphone and you go on Amazon. And you want to buy a pair of pants. And once you hold down on the picture, you can actually start to feel the texture of that fabric. Oh, that is sick. Right? Or like, let's say, um, you, you know, you're playing like pool or some games with your friends. And then you hold down, you know, you're, you're like grabbing the ball. You can feel the material of the ball or the chalk, like touching your fingers. Yeah. That, that to me. More immersive. It would make it so much more exciting, so much more immersive. I also think back to kind of the theme of this episode, which is assistive technology. I wonder if it's possible, you know, for folks that are visually impaired and may not be able to read text, if they could be able to feel Braille on the screen using this technology. Exactly. I think that would be really, really cool to kind of, you know, obviously for you and I, we both ha we both are sighted, which would be, we are already excited about being able to feel textures on our phone and such, but imagine the way that this could make technology accessible to so many more people. I mean, the way I think about it now, every single screen, you can't feel braille anywhere there's nothing that can show you that i mean at least that i know of in the smartphone and other devices i use every single day no i'm with you and that's the first thing that my my mind went to when i was reading this article because um you, you know twitter is a great spot for like seeing all these heartwarming stories and i used to see like people were like oh like i went out to dinner with my sister and this restaurant for the first time like gave her a, a braille menu but then the pandemic happened, and now every time I go to a restaurant, there, there are no menus. There's just a like QR code to scan. And I'm wondering, like, yeah, that might have made, made it easier for some people that can actually, like, get the auditory feedback from whatever web page they're taken to. But some of them might not have that anymore. Yeah. And you know what? Even if you do get the auditory feedback, maybe you don't want to. You, you don't always <laughs> yeah. want. Yeah, maybe you just want to, like, silently do the thing and just, like, read with your hands. So that's I, – I think – they, they, I'm, I'm assuming Dr. Hipwell and her team have thought about this, but to me, that that's the most amazing contribution that they can make in, in this sector. And you know, we always talk about the secret sauce. What is the secret yeah, that's sauce? That's what I was gonna say. Well, it's, these are pretty, you know, it's an it's an excited story to be happy about. Um, interesting technology, but how are they making it work? To me, it seems. Uh, I don't know if I'm just being cynical, but to me, it seems not that not that near on the horizon that my phone screen would be able to show me textures or display braille or something like that it for sure is pretty ambitious but um yeah so the secret sauce not fully made yet they're right? still cooking but the it's sauce. brewing they're, they're still cooking what the ingredients sauce. They're are letting they putting it simmer in? so this is uh, they broke down everything they're looking at and essentially from the moment that your finger touches the screen every kind of contact that's happening they are investigating. So they talked about electro wetting effects, electrostatic effects, changes in your fingers' properties, material properties and surface geometry, contact mechanics, fluid motion, charge transport, literally like anything that is occurring at that moment, they are digging okay, so into to figure not out. Not only the way that your phone interacts with your hand when you touch it, so however that is sensed on the phone side and however that is displayed on the phone, but also how the sensory input happens on your finger. So that, you know, just as your phone 
senses things when you when your finger touches it trying to make it so that your finger can sense things when it touches your phone as well exactly yeah and uh, i'm i'll be honest i when, when i read stuff that doesn't have like a definite definitive answer yet i'm pretty hesitant to like want to share it or talk about it but one this just made me really happy and i, I needed to share it with yeah. someone and two, the team makes a lot of sense. So as I mentioned, Dr. Cynthia Hipwell, she's a professor and she's a department head. She's lead, I mean, the department chair and she's leading this. And her uh, research background is actually in nanostructures and tribology. So I feel like that, that's like the perfect duo of anyone that wants to crack the code yeah. here. And in her um, in the article, they talk a lot about how this is a multi-physics challenge. So it's interdisciplinary. They're pulling in everyone and everyone to see how they can make this happen. So if any team and, can you know, make it happen, it's this one. That's how I'm feeling. So hopefully in the not so distant future, we can give you guys an update on where the team is at. But I, I just would really be really to share exciting. This. I thought that was a great yeah. topic. I'd also be really hyped to get to try one of these as well. Me too. Imagine like what? Most of these episodes, we're doing it remotely. We could like, I don't know, do some interactions. Yeah, we fist bump each other. You know? Yeah. <laughs> we could definitely fist bump each other, yeah. Awesome. Uh, 